All right, in this video, I'm gonna show you everything I've learned over the past four years of doing SMMA. I'm gonna give you all the lessons I've learned and all of the Karsten Fox lore. So everything that's happened to me up until this point and then the lessons I learned along the way. This is gonna be a little long. The first couple slides are gonna be just me talking about my kind of setup for this. And then I'm gonna get into some lessons as we go along through this. Hopefully you guys can receive some value. So sit back, relax and listen. All right. Uh, this is just my results. I'm going to show you just a, a few things here. I've made, this is a little, uh, this was like last week. So I made uh, 920,000 so far and my SMMA journey. This is plenty of appointments I get every week, blah, blah, blah. And I also have my appointment log. This is since I've been tracking the appointments, 4,536 appointments since we've been tracking it. So probably an extra one to 2,000 appointments uh, outside of that. But that's some of my real results. And then Here's some of my early life. I'm just showing you this to show you that I was not any more privileged privileged than you are. I was not, nothing about me was better than your current situation. So I grew up in my parents' basement. These are some photos of me in my parents' basement. See, that's my friend John. I had my bed that was on the floor. These are some concrete walls. You can also see my concrete walls here. I was extremely, I was going to try to show you a picture of me um, when I was extremely skinny. It looks like I was a Holocaust survivor. It was really bad. And also it was a concrete floor, like three walls of concrete. The one wall that I never showed was that wasn't concrete was a, like a broken drywall wall. It wasn't like completely finished. My door didn't have a door handle and there was a string that was basically the thing I used to lock it. So I would tie the string to this little peg and that's how I locked my door. And I was homeschooled. So it wasn't like I was connected and had a whole bunch of friends or anything like that. I, mean, I had friends, but not a ton of friends. I lived in a pretty small town. This is rel relatively small. It's Dayton, Ohio has, I think, 200,000 people over the metropolitan area. And this house that I was at was in Fairborn, Ohio, which probably has 2,000, 3,000 people total in it. And I was introverted. It wasn't like I was extremely good at talking or I was extremely good at sales or anything like that. I worked at Best Buy in the first, <laughs> the first few months of working at Best Buy trying to walk up to people and try to sell them something was really difficult for me. And I also had no girls. I'm just a loser. I'm, I'm just putting this in there, putting this out. I was not anything special. Okay. My parents wasn't like they were well connected. They worked at a hotel, at a banquet hall in the hotel. And my other, my dad, my, he did, he just, he works in, uh, helps special needs people, which is awesome. But it wasn't like they were well connected or like they ran any businesses or anything like that. So that's just my background, where I've come from. Now, starting off, graduation. I graduate high school. I have no clue what to do. <laughs> I turn to online gurus because they might have the answers for me, which I think is where a lot of people start. They just don't really know what to do. And so they just start watching people online. I watched Ty Lopez when everybody else was clowning on him. So everyone, you know, I was clowning on him too. Everyone was like, oh, he's fake, whatever. These fake gurus just saying all this stuff about Lamborghinis and whatever. And then I watched a video of his just to like kind of make fun of it, right? And I watched it and I was like, this is actually kind of good. He actually is smart and he does know what he's talking about and he actually does read these books. I'm like, so he's talking about reading books every day and you could tell that he reads books every day. And so I was like, maybe there's actually some substance to this. You know, everyone else clowns on him and says that they're so bad, but... You, know, you don't really get there, but and maybe if they are lying, how did they still, how do they get there? Did they get there by lying? And if they did that, how so? And so obviously there's some substance to it. And then I would watch Stephen James and he was, it was just very basic stuff. I would look up online, like how to find your purpose. And I don't just random crap like that or uh, businesses to start online, you know? So I'll look up that stuff and he would come up and Stephen James had really good stuff about different books to read, whatever. And also Sam Ovens uh, talking about different business stuff and the books that he would read. And I was like, okay, all these people read books. And I thought reading books was kind of a scam. I never really read books in high school. I would just read the cliff notes. And so I was like, there was no point of me reading, sitting here reading for eight hours a day just to get some knowledge that I could just watch on a 10 minute YouTube video. But these people started to influence me. I think a lot of times people don't realize everyone says you are the average of the five people you spend the most time with. And I think that's true. And we all kind of believe that, but also I think that can apply to what any stimulus that you're taking in. So the weather outside can affect how you feel that day. The music you're listening to, right, can affect how you feel that day. And I think the people that you watch online can really affect how you operate day to day. And I think if the top five people you spend the most time with online can also affect how successful you are or how you act, what kind of jokes you tell, all that stuff, right? And so when I was growing up in this parents, my parents' basement, I would get up every morning and Casey Neistat would upload a video and I would watch his YouTube video. And he really influenced me 
uh, in the beginning because it was like he would wake up every day uh, really early. He would make this video. He had running this $100 million company, make a, an incredible video that would took a lot of editing work and setting up the cameras and all that. Throughout the entire day, he was doing that. And then he would upload it every single day. I was like, that's insane that he did that every day. And he would say things like, uh, all you got to do is outwork everybody else. Like, even if you're worse at anything, just outwork them. And then also, all you have to do is prove them wrong. So if someone's saying that, you know, I don't think you can do this, whatever, the only thing you can do is either prove them right or prove them wrong. And so I really took that to heart. And so that was kind of an early influence. Instead of, you know, I hung out with friends that were 13 and 14, and it's not like they were good influences because they were just also my age. But hanging out with people online that were already millionaires or people that were already successful or just were really hardworking, and I was able to take on some of those attributes just by watching them. You know, so I think that can also really help you just by watching some people. So I was watching these people, right? So I got lost where every day I just, oh my gosh, dude, every day I just didn't know what to do. And I would wake up and I'm like, hey, what do I do today? And then every night I would go to bed and like, okay, what am I going to do tomorrow? I, I really have no clue what to do. And then I feel like at that point, my life was pretty pointless where I was like, I just don't really know what to do. And I don't like the taking on the word uh, depression because I wasn't, wasn't depressed. And I, I think if you just label it that way, people just, you just kind of, Put that on yourself, right? But it was just, I, I just feel like there is no purpose. What, what I am just a living vessel that's doing absolutely nothing. I'm just taking, I'm just taking air for everybody else. Like, why do I, why am I even here, right? So that was my life every day. Uh, out of that, I started reading books every day because everybody else was saying it. And so I would read a book and I would do the dishes and I would clean up the house. My mom loved me at the time and I would bounce a wall, bounce a ball off the wall every single day and just sit there for hours. The first book I read was How to Win Friends and Influence People. If that was not the first book I read, I probably wouldn't keep reading books because that book was incredible. I remember just turning it on because everyone was saying, yeah, these are the books you want to read or you want to start reading books, right? All these gurus. And so I watched one book and it was just, here's the top five books you should read, right? Just to, uh, for self-improvement. And so the first one is How to Win Friends and Influence People. I was like, all right, let me just try it, see what happens. There was, how I did it is there's audiobooks. I don't want to pay for anything, right? Audiobooks on YouTube for free. So you can look up on YouTube, how to win friends and influence p people audiobook. And there's an audiobook there, right? So I turned it on and I started doing the dishes. And like within the first, you know, he said within the first three chapters, your life will be changed, right? I was like, that's a really bold claim. But within the first th three chapters, I was like, dang, this is insane. Uh, and I remember the first three chapters is don't criticize, condemn, or complain. Give honest and sincere appreciation and arouse in the other person an anger want. I still remember those three chapters. And... So I was like, I just, I, you know, read that whole book that first day and it was like four or five hours long. I was like, man, I have just changed my perspective on my entire life within four or five hours. Why is no one doing this every day? Like, why hasn't someone told me about this? Which they did, but I just didn't want to read the books. All right. So I started reading books every day and I would also go to the library and I would take photos of books that I wanted to read. Or I, uh, I actually got the app Speechify, which I actually was able to meet the owner of the app Speechify. Basically all you do is you you scan like books or scan documents and it can read it back to you. And so I would just like scan, would take pictures at the library of the books and then have it read back to me as an audiobook. Pretty interesting. Also at the bottom here, I'm going to have timestamps of when this is, this is mid 2019. And with a lot of these things, I'm going to show you pictures or there's going to be videos that will play. And you can also watch the videos. Like a lot of this stuff I actually recorded on my other YouTube channel when I was just getting started and all this stuff. So we'll get into that in a minute. Job. This is a video of me. I just turned it into a GIF, but it's just, this, it's just a video I had when I was working at Apple. I got a job at Apple, and it wasn't like, you know, getting a job at Apple is not hard. It sounds like it's really cool, but it, it was at an Apple store, and I was literally the guy that ran back and forth. I was in like this little, this video right here is in this little warehouse, and you get, if someone says, I want an iPhone, I'm the one that grabs the iPhone and hands it out to you. So that was my job. And so I started to save money to try to invest in starting a business, and I bought Sam Owens course. It was really good head knowledge. Like I learned a lot about just mindset and all this stuff and like what I need to understand. Like everything is your fault and you have to kind of accept that everything is your fault. It's not your parents' fault, whatever. Just accept everything's your fault and then you have to fix your situation. Nobody else can fix it for you. So stuff like that. But it was not good because I didn't know. It was just saying pick a niche. And I was like, well, I don't know what niche to pick. And I don't really know what path to go down. And so I didn't know what to do. They had a Facebook group. I go into the Facebook group and there was a guy named Lucas and he decided to help me out. And I just said, I posted in the Facebook group and this one thing changed the course. I think a lot of these little actions that I took really did change the course of my life. And these little actions, they're really not that hard and they're just little actions, right? So if you just take the little actions, you will get somewhere. You just have to actually do it and not be embarrassed, right? So I posted in this Facebook group, hey, can anybody help me out? I just really don't, don't know how to get started. And someone just lent a helping hand, which was Lucas. And he just said, hey man, I'll help you out. What do you need help with? 
And I was like, I don't really know what minutes to pick or how to get started or whatever. He was telling me what he was doing. He was making twenty to $40,000 a month helping kids with soccer. And I was like, that's interesting. How do you even do that? I don't really know anything about soccer. And so he also was just going to give me some advice. So I was like, hey, this is what I've been doing. I've done commercial videos in the past. Kind of, I did like one commercial video and I usually just do wedding videos for my friends and I just do videos for myself and I show it on my Instagram and he gave me some advice on what to do. And he also said, Hey, can you help me out? Can you make a intro for a video series I'm running? So I made a video intro for him with this and he paid me $200 for it. And I thought I was on top of the world. And I am him now because I had made $200 online. And I remember just him just sending me that on Venmo. And I was like, man, I'm, I know exactly what to do now. Like, I'm going to be able to get so much money and so many clients. And it was like $200, right? But I felt like I was on top of the world because of this. Now, I couldn't really repeat that process because I don't really know what to do <laughs> after that, right? Where I didn't like, I was like, okay, how do I, do I just keep posting on Facebook asking for help and then trying to sell something to people? You know, it wasn't really a solid system, but I felt on top of the world, right? So I didn't know what to do. So I picked up a second job doing door-to-door -door sales. And the second, okay, the first day I go in to do training, the second day I was supposed to go in to do training, they, COVID hits, right? So where the lockdown, you can't go and work, whatever. And so I hit the jackpot. Not everybody hit the jackpot, but I did. And because both of these jobs were paying me. So working at Apple, they're going to pay me for like the average I was working. I was like working like 30 hours a week, not full-time, but part-time. And the other job, they were giving me the sign-on bonus. So like they'll pay you for like the first six weeks an extra $750 a week on top of that commissions. And I wasn't obviously making any commissions because I'm not out and actually knocking on doors, but making $750 a week. So basically I'm making both of these jobs combined $5,000 a month and I'm not doing any work. We have like online meetings we have to do two, three hours a week, but that's about it, right? So I'm working these two jobs, being able to make $5,000 a month and just sitting at home. So I thought this was a perfect opportunity. My goal was to make $1,500 a month so I don't have to go back to these jobs and I can move out of my parents' basement. That was the goal. So I bought another program that was $5,000 and it was a kind of a waste of my money. I would always try to understand what you're getting into, obviously, before you buy something. But it was a brotherhood and it was just called the brotherhood. I don't know what, what why. Just because it was dudes, I guess. And... It was basically just a program, and I, I'm not saying that it's not good. For some people, it might be good, but for the situation I was in, I was like, I want to learn how to make money online. That was my goal. And the guy on the sales call was saying, yeah, we'll help you make money online. Like, we're, We'll guarantee that. We're going to help you. And I was like, okay, cool. So I bought the program. It was just mindset stuff like, you're one in a trillion, and you are special. <laughs> that's basically that's all it was. It's just like hype stuff for, I don't know, men that have no purpose in life. I don't know what it is. But you're one in a trillion. I'm like, okay, yeah, I'm one in a trillion. Thank you for that. Uh, but also these kids in Africa who are starving are also one in a trillion. And also I'm just trying to learn how to make money online. So could you help me with that? And it was, there was no real help on how to actually start a business or anything, which I guess was my fault because I didn't really do enough research. So I was, I was like thinking of, okay, what could I do? There's or start doing what you think would work best, whatever that means, right? So I had done some Instagram marketing in the past. I had done some video work in the past. What if I just did like videos for other people, maybe did social media management where I just like help them create images and videos and stuff. And so they can post it, post it on their social media profiles. So I did reach out to some people, but I would like do like 10 messages in one day. And then I was like, Oh, this is kind of embarrassing. I think the most part was it was kind of hard to do where you're doing it manually one by one, but also it, was, it is kind of embarrassing where you're just like sending out messages to people. And I'm like, well, what if they don't like it? Or what if someone finds out that I'm sending messages? I don't know why those are my fears, but they were. And so I just didn't really do a ton of messages back and forth to anybody. And nobody really responded to the messages I was sending because they weren't very good to begin with. So then I, would reach out to some people, try to like build rapport. Some people that were also in this brotherhood group. And I'll say, Hey, so you do, do you do social media? Like, yeah, we, we do social media. I'm like, do you need, like, how are you doing that? And I would, I would be kind of scared to offer any pitch or anything. And so it didn't really turn into anything, but I was so desperate to get something to work. I just spent $5,000 on this thing. I need to get something, anything to work. So I went back to Lucas and I was like, well, I went to Lucas's Instagram page. It was pretty lacking and he just, you know, stuff about soccer and whatever. And it was just had nothing on there. And so I was like, Hey, I can help you with your Instagram page. And so he became my first client where basically I said, I'll help you with your Instagram page. The next day he had a baby. So he's like, yeah, actually we do need help with that. And I was like, thank God. You know, it was like, it was just, just a coincidence that I actually, one, I just did the action. So you just do the action, but it was, I, I just got lucky where he said yes, where he actually did need help. So, and if he didn't say yes, again, I, my life would be completely different where it is today. So I've, I probably wouldn't have kept taking the actions. And so just that small win helped me keep taking actions, right? He said yes. 
he had a baby the next day. And I was like kind of scared to reach back out to him. But, you know, someone said, just reach out back to him. Just see what happens, right? So I reach back out to him. I get him on the phone. We have a call. And I say, hey, it's going to cost $1,000. I'll help you manage your Instagram. He's like, oh, we don't know if we can do that because certain reasons. We don't know if it's going to be worth it for us. Let's just do $500 a month. I was willing to do that. Cool. And it was one client in the door. Awesome. So I got him as a client. And I was able to quit my jobs and start working for him more. So I wasn't able to get more clients. I didn't really know what to do to get more clients. And I asked him, like, hey, do you have any friends that might also need my services? And he's like, I mean, I have other people. What, why aren't you just working for me? And I'm like, well, because you're only paying me $500 a month. And I need to either, either work for you, either you pay me more, or I have to go back to my jobs. And so he was, able to, he was willing to pay me more, started paying me $1,500 a month. And now I'm making $1,500 a month working online. Now, the guy, right, he gave me the promise of, hey, I'll help you get to $1,500 a month and working online. And he didn't help me at all. Like the program didn't really help me at all, but I was still able to get there. And so it is kind of a, a testimony. When I was like reading back over this, I was like, man, it was, I was able to get to my goal, even though it wasn't how it felt like hell going through it, but it wasn't really that bad. And I still got to my goal, which is what I set in the beginning. And so whatever, usually what I know this, everyone says this, but whatever you set your mind to, you actually do get it even though it might, it's kind of like the genie in a bottle thing where the genie comes out and says, what do you want? I say, I want riches. And then you get riches. And then, but then there's some like weird life lessons at the part of it. I think this is, you will get what you want, but you'll get just what you want, right? Exactly what you say. So it was like, I was making $1,500 a month. I had one guy. It wasn't like I had clients. I just had this one guy, but I was working online. So I did get where I was trying to go just from setting in my mind. This is what I want. You know, it was kind of interesting. And as you can see throughout this journey, I, some of the other things where I set the goal when I was actually able to make it, but it was like, I just got to like, just barely got to what I wanted, you know? So I went to Chicago to work on some projects with him because he was in Chicago. I basically just did his ads for him. He was able to give me more stuff. And so he started paying me like $3,000 a month with some more things that he added to my plate, like running the ads and everything. And I was able to go to Maine. My mom was a traveling nurse. And so, you know, during COVID, every, everyone wanted a nurses wherever they were. And so I was able to go to Maine with my mom and like my family and just like chill. It was so nice every day waking up on the beach, just walking on the beach. It was so nice. And so that was really cool and getting paid $3,000 a month. And it was awesome. I was still living with my parents' basement. So I was able to save some money. Now, I uh, became more of a job than a client because obviously I was just working for him. And I didn't really know how to grow further. I helped him scale to $100,000 a month. He was about $40,000 a month when we started. We were able to, able to get to $100,000 a month. I was able to decrease the ads by 50%. So it was like $100 per call. We got it to $50 per call, higher quality leads, and we were able to double the sales. So now we're making $100,000 really cool. But I'm still making $3,000. So I was like, well, I'm helping this guy make $100,000. I'm only making $3,000. But, you know, he built the business and everything. And I, I just don't think this is my purpose. For some reason, I was still wrapped in my head about what's my purpose in life. And I didn't really know if I really wanted to do this long term. If like, I didn't think I'm not passionate. And that was really my main word at the time was I'm not passionate about uh, running soccer ads for kids. So it didn't really work out where I said, Hey, look, I don't know if I want to do this long term. Now that was dumb on my part. Like no one cares what you're passionate about. Not even your mom cares about what you're passionate about. It's really just about your whole life is going to be about giving to other people. I'm going to get into this in a little bit, but your life is just going to be giving to others. And if you want to feel like you're providing some value to the world, and you know, when I was going to bed every night, just not knowing what to do with my life, it was really because there was no value I was providing to anybody. I just wanted to feel like people, you know, we want other people to accept us. And the way to get other people to accept us is by giving to them in some way. And if we're giving them value, they're going to say, oh, thank you so much for the value that you gave me, right? But I wasn't giving any value. I was just doing nothing all day. And so that's why I felt like I had no purpose. And here I was actually getting value and actually doing stuff. But for some reason I was just wrapped in people were saying, do what you love. And I was like, well, I don't do. I really love this. And I was like, just questioning myself. And it's like, no one cares about what you love. You just have to give to them. Right. And you'll start loving the things I would, when I was a kid, I never said to myself, I want to be the best at B2B lead generation, which is what I am now. I'm the best at B2B lead generation. I never said to myself, I wanted to do that. Right. When I was in first grade, the Carson never said, I want to be the best at B2B lead generation. I never said I want to do marketing. Right. No one's, that's no one's career path, but you just start figuring out, okay, well, people actually need this service and they actually are really thankful when I help them with the service. And so then you start becoming passionate about oh, what just actually helping people. So anyways, no one cares about what you're passionate about. Don't worry about that. Cool. Back to square one. I didn't know what to do. I lost this guy as a client or whatever. And we stopped working together in October, November. And so or October, right? And so in November, I'm like just trying to figure out what do I do with my life, right? 
So I read a book called 12 Months to 1 Million, and I thought of the perfect plan. I was just reading books and going back to the phase of just like, let me just read books every day, whatever. And I was like, this is a perfect plan. For some reason, I still thought about going back into film. I was going to go to film school, you know, before, like after graduation. That was kind of one of my ideas, maybe doing that. Or, you know, going to either Hollywood or going to Cleveland. They just made this new program in Cleveland. I don't know, just random stuff. But it, nothing really worked out. I didn't go to any school, and I didn't really want to get into debt like that. So I didn't, thank God, I didn't do that. Holy cow. Uh, <laughs> there were some schools, $50,000 per semester, insane. And no guarantee for jobs or anything like that. But I was like, maybe I would do want to get back to film or make that my career or whatever. So I thought, what if I did a thing where I made a series called zero to 12, zero to 1 million in 12 months, right? And I will try to build a business from zero to $1 million in 12 months. And I will just record my journey of me doing it. And I can turn it into a documentary at the end. So I can go into film and I can go into business at the same time. Now, if both of them work out where I make a really good film and it gets on Netflix, whatever, that's awesome. Or if I make a million dollar business and the film doesn't work out, that's still cool. I was able to make a million dollar business. Or if both of them don't work out where the business fails and no one watches this video or this documentary that I'm trying to make, still cool because in the end, I wasted a year of my life. And I was willing to waste a year doing what I think I would love just to see what would happen. And if it didn't work out, you know, I'll, I'll take a year. I can go back to school after that, whatever. You know, just a year. So... I started making and recording a video series. At the beginning, it was like every day I would record throughout November and December of me, okay, what, what business am I going to start? How am I going to start it? You know, what, uh, who am I going to reach out to? Stuff like this. And so I started making videos every day on this, on this other YouTube channel. So you can go and look at this other YouTube channel. Just look up Carson Fox. There's two YouTube channels, or actually three of when I was like nine years old. <laughs> and then one of me, that was my main one for a long time where I made all these videos. And then this one was more of a business channel that I started. And this one was actually the one that kind of grew. But... That one, I had all these videos on there, and you can watch my pain and suffering throughout that entire process and watch those videos. So I was like, I'm going to commit to this for a year. So making those videos kept me accountable, and I felt like I couldn't go back on my word because I already said it. And so I started actually just taking action. So if I were you, I would just commit for a year and see where it goes. If Again, it's one of these little actions where I just said to myself, I'm going to take this action. I'm going to commit for a year. And we're just going to see what happens. I would not be where I am today if I didn't commit for that first year. And that first year was pretty hell. But it's like I wouldn't be where I am if I didn't go through that, right? So it was well worth it in the end for me. So just commit for a year, whatever you're trying to do. Cool. And I can guarantee if you commit, like do as much as you can within a year, then you obviously get way further than you thought you would. And there'll be so like just within the first year it was so crazy. Like so many things happened. And I was like, man, even if let's say it all failed and I had to go back to a job, that's okay. Cause I was like, man, there's such a good story in the end, at least, you know, pretty cool. All right. So I started planning out my year in December cause I was going to hit the ground running January 1st. And I was just going to try to do zero to 1 million in that whole year. And this was uh, the year of 2021. So this is late 2020 that I'm doing this. Cool. All right, so when I quit my job, I have $15,000 saved in my bank account. And I quit the job with a soccer guy. In December, I spent $5,000 on courses on how to get clients, how to start an agency, affiliate marketing, just random stuff. I didn't really know what to do, but just looking at different things. Sam Ovens talked about give people what they want, right? You just want to give people whatever is an urgent need for them. If we can give that to them, then they're going to pay us, right? So we just need to figure out what they want. So I called 100 businesses. Again, I made a video of me calling 100 businesses, and you can watch me do this. It was easy to find out what people are looking for, and it's also usually pretty easy to fulfill for them. You just don't really realize it at the time. So my first idea was I was a videographer, right? And as a videographer, I did videos for weddings, and I hated so much with a burning passion, hated doing wedding videos because they're the same thing every time. <laughs> oh my God, I hated it. And uh, just the trauma. So I don't want to do any wedding videos, but I like doing the corporate videos because usually they pay more money and they're cooler, right? If I go to a, like, let's say Kings Island or like a Six Flags type thing where you're just taking videos of amusement parks, that's really cool, right? Rather than just watching someone walk down the aisle for the eighth time, you know, that week. <laughs> so we want to do commercial videos. And so I reached out to other videography friends because I was already in the industry. I reached out to my other videography friends. I said, hey, do you want to do more commercial videos too? Like, do you like wedding videos or commercial? And a lot of them, they liked uh, wedding or commercial videos more. They hated doing weddings. They wanted more consistent uh, video jobs, but they just didn't know how to get more consistent video jobs. And so that became my first offer. Was like, what if I helped videographers get more commercial video jobs? 
but I didn't know how to help them. I didn't know what the fulfillment would be. I didn't know that you could do direct outreach. And so I looked at videos like how to get clients as a videographer and nothing really you know, came up. There wasn't really good videos on it. And so I was like, well, I can't help them with this. There was no way I could fulfill for this because I don't really know how to do it. I don't know how to do the ads for this. I don't know, how, you know. And so if I didn't really know how to do this, then what was the point of me actually helping them? But now looking back, I realize that the fulfillment on that is actually really easy. And actually, I met someone who actually did this. They just started reaching out to videographers, selling commercial videos, helping them get commercial videos. They did it for like a $2,000 setup plus $150 per call. And they're making thirty dollars to $40,000 per month doing what my initial idea was. <laughs> and all they're doing is cold email for them. And at the time, I didn't know what cold email was. I didn't know that that was an option. All you have to do is actually just send out messages. If you send enough messages to people saying, hey, I can help you do a cor corporate videography job. And we'll do the first one for free for you if you want to do a commercial. And if you just send out that out, People will say, yes, I'm interested. I didn't know how to do that. But if I would have just done research for a week, I probably could have figured that out, but I just didn't do any research. And so then I just gave up on that dream for some reason. I don't know. <laughs> so videography jobs didn't work out. And so I settled on pest control companies because I called 100 businesses. The pest control companies were the most responsive and they were the easiest to get a hold of. And they said that they want more bed bug heat treatments and they hated relying on word of mouth. So my offer became... I help pest control companies get bed, 10 bed bug heat treatments without relying on word of mouth. That's my offer, right? And so that became my offer. So I was started reaching out to people with that offer in 2021. That was like, I started reaching out really December, like after Christmas 2020, which is, you know, the first last week of the year. And so I started reaching out on LinkedIn, email, and Facebook, just seeing who was going to be responsive. And the first guy that reached back out to me was a guy from this company, Midwest pests and wildlife. And as you can see the messages here, I screw up on the message. I say, Hey, I can bring you 10 people that are interested in bed bug heat treatments in Tampa. And he said, we're based in Ohio, right? I was just like copying, pasting messages and hoping that he would respond or anyone would respond. I accidentally sent them the wrong message saying Tampa. And I said, Oh yeah, I just said that to get your attention. You're in Dayton, right? So I don't really recommend that strategy, but it did work for me. And I was able to get this guy to convert. Now he paid me $600. The reason I came up with a $600 price tag is because I also try to figure out how to do fulfillment, right? How to do ads to get, you know, pest control job, jobs. And I looked up on Upwork and I put out a job post on Upwork. Hey, does anyone know how to do, you know, pest control ads? And people would reach out and say, yeah, we can do it. We can do it. We can do it. One guy said, we'll do it. And we have experience in it and we'll charge $600 per account. And so I just said, hey, I'll charge $600 just to see if, you know, I could get something to work and just get my first client in the door. So I'm making no money off of this deal because this guy paid me $600 and I pay him, the, the media buyer, $600 to run the ads for me. Now I had ran ads in the past, but I didn't know if this was going to be a lot different doing ads for pest control. I don't really know how to get results for that. And so I was like, okay, somebody else knows how to do it. Let me just give it to them. Now the media buyer didn't get any results. They got absolutely nothing. They were able to get leads, but and uh, I'm not going to blame this on the media buyer because it's really my fault too, because I didn't really, I didn't vet them. And so they got these leads in the door and they didn't really turn into anything. No one really converted into an actual sale or no one really needed bed bug heat treatments. And so what I would say is never hire someone unless you can confidently see that they have results. Like you can actually prove they have screenshots of things that they've done in the past. They have numbers of exact numbers of what you can expect in terms of conversions. How much, what's, what's the cost per lead? And then what's the cost per conversion after that lead? What's the cost per call after the cost? Because, you know, there's a lead that comes in and then they turn into calls and the call turns into a conversion or a sale. And so, you know, break down those numbers for me. If they cannot give you that, then they're probably not a good fit. And they're probably lying to you about that they've done this in the past and they've done work in the past, right? So don't ever hire anyone who doesn't have results and is actually just claiming that they have results. So on this first deal, I lost the, I had, a, I gave him a guarantee, right? I was, this is going to work for you. And he's like, Hey, this is not working for me. Can you give me my money back? So I had to give him the $600 back. And the media buyer also said, Hey, I'll give you the money back if it doesn't work. And then the media buyer just goes me. Right. And so he doesn't even give me back the money. So now I just lost $600. And on top of that, I told the guy, if we waste money on the ads, I'll give you back the money that we waste on the ads. So we spent $250 with ads and I had to pay him back the $250. So really I wasted like $850 on this first deal. I just lost that money. So another thing too, was actually funny. A, I remember a later on down the journey, and this is not in this thing, I'm just a random story. I, I was trying to find cold callers for a specific purpose. And so I was looking on Upwork for people that, you know, might be good at cold calling. And I put out a job post and then people, you know, apply for the job and say, yeah, we do cold calling. And so I talked to one guy and I say, Hey, you know, do you do cold calling, right? Where are your cold callers located? You know, he's just giving me answers and whatever. And I was like, okay, can you give me any numbers? Cause you know, I went through this journey where I, I knew that I need to ask and make sure that they have any results. Cause if they don't have any results, then they're probably not a good fit. So 
I say, hey, buddy, do you have any numbers on, you know, the cold callers that you've done in the past, how many calls they do per day, uh, what the response rate is, all that stuff. And he said, no, man, I can't, I can just make up numbers right now, but we're just going to dial the phone and we're going to do as much as we can. I was like, okay, yeah, that's great. But any numbers across any other industry, he's like, well, every industry is different. So I can't give you any numbers. But I was like, dude, just literally anything, give me anything, any numbers. Right. And he's like, dude, I can, you know, lie to you all day, but we're just going to dial it. I'm like, dude, it's like, oh, so you can't give me any numbers. He hangs up that he's on the zoom, right? So he hangs up the zoom call. And then he blocks me on Upwork. I didn't even know you could do that, but he blocks me on Upwork to where I, we, I can't message him back and forth. And so, you know, just vetting just a little bit just to try to see if they have any results. Always do that before spending any money because you could get screwed. And this guy, he sounded convincing, right? He sounded very convincing. I was like, oh, yeah, let's move forward. But do you have any results? And it couldn't show me anything. So always be aware of that. Cool. California. All right. My mom, like I said, she was a traveling nurse, and she now is going to California because this COVID stuff. I'm going to tell you something about the COVID stuff. Or I'm not going to be this conspiracy theorist, and what do I know? I'm not a doctor. But uh, we go to California because the vaccine just came out, and everyone needed this vaccine, and everyone was – California at the time was the worst state. So many COVID problems, right? And they were all dying apparently, right? We go to California. <laughs> no one's dying. She goes into work every day to give vaccines. No one comes in for the vaccines. Nobody. Maybe like, you know, we're expecting thousands of people to come in, maybe a couple, like a dozen people come in, right? So she starts working on the telephones, just doing like telehealth things for people just because she has nothing else to do. She's not giving any vaccines. And then she also starts working in the emergency room because no one's coming in for vaccines. And so it was like, it wasn't as much as people, as much the numbers were, there's this many deaths. It was not nearly what that, what it was, especially in California. Cause again, I was there. My mom was an actual nurse during that time. Wasn't as bad as it was. But anyways, we're in California. She's not working that hard, which is good because now we're just, you know, chilling in California. And she's making a lot of money doing that. And I just kind of come along along the ride for some reason. I was like, you know what? I've never been to California. Let's just go. So I was only getting about two to three sales calls per week at the time. I'm sorry for the random rants there. <laughs> I was getting about two to three sales calls per week, reaching out to these pest control companies, but nothing was really working. Someone recommended, actually the media buyer recommended that I go out to solar and roofing companies. And because I was in California and it's popular in California, solar and roofing. And I was getting... I still only getting two to three sales calls a week, but higher quality calls because I realized pest control companies don't have any money, right? The ones I did call, they're like, oh, I don't have to think about it or I don't have any money right now, but you know, if we can get some deals rolling in, then I can maybe pay you, right? So what I would recommend to anyone is reach out to industries that already have money. It's a lot easier to sell to someone that already has money. It's extremely hard to sell to someone that doesn't have any money, right? And do your market research and just be willing to test and don't listen to the dog crap of stick to one niche. There's so many people that are talking about, you want to find one niche and stick to it. But some niches, right, You like me, I went into pest control. If I was still in pest control, I would still be broke today because they are broke. They don't have any money. And now I would be broke because I'm just trying to sell to people that are also broke. And so if I went into the solar and roofing space, I was able to get a much higher quality deals and a more closed deals because they are working on higher quality deals, right? Where they're, they're getting a $40,000 deal and they're making a lot of profit margin. So, you know, they have a couple thousand dollars uh, what they're making off of that deal. And they're willing to give you a couple thousand dollars for helping them create that deal, right? And so it was much easier to sell to solar and roofing because it was, they already had the money. So I'll give you an example. There was a guy who was doing commercial insurance that I know. And he said he was spending $1,500 a month or $1,000 to $2,000 a month on like LinkedIn average. Some guy that was like, he was paying him to do the LinkedIn average for him. He said like he didn't get him any leads, no sales calls, and he paid him for an entire year. But he was willing to pay him for the entire year because he said if he would have just got, just got one deal out of it, it would have been worth it for him and he would have made his money back. But he just spent an entire year paying him and got no leads. And so even though that's a bad example, you don't want to do that to somebody, but he was willing to pay the money. So let's just go to an industry where they're willing to spend that money and just test something just to see if it works rather than going to an industry where they're strapped on cash and they can't even afford you. And if, even if they can't afford you, they're going to want their money back in two weeks anyways, because it's not working as fast as they thought it was. You know, other thing is another example, cosmetic dentist. There was, they make $50,000 per cosmetic dental surgery, whatever, like a full mouth reconstruction, whatever. And so if I, so people charge $50,000 per year, towards cosmetic dentists saying, you know, we'll help you get so many jobs. And if they just get one job, it was worth it for them, right? Because now they just paid the price of that year's worth of subscription. So now you can charge $50,000 per month or sorry, $50,000 per year, or you can even do per month if you wanted to. If we can just get them one job per month, it's worth it for them. It kind of evens out. So if we get them two jobs per month. That's all we really need to do for a cosmetic dentist for it to be worth it for them. You know, another guy in my group does, uh, he helps limb lengthening uh, surgeons and he just kind of knows about the industry. And he had 
his name is Victor. I think his YouTube channel is called Cyborg for Life. He's a really cool guy. And limb lengthening is basically you just make your legs longer. So if you're a short guy, you can become taller. Or if you have, sometimes your leg is shorter than the other, and it can give you a lot of back problems. And so you can get this limb lengthening surgery to make your leg a little taller so that you don't have those back problems. And those surgeries cost $100,000, right? And so, you know, I was helping him throughout this journey. And now he is working with like one or two doctors. He's working like with all these doctors, but he got this new job working this with the doctor doing marketing for them as a part of my systems and what I kind of gave him. And he's making like $150,000 per year just working with this one doctor. And because it's worth it, right? Because the Sarah surgery costs $150,000. And so if he can just get one more surgery per year, you know, hiring this guy, this professional marketing guy, then it's going to be worth it for him. You know? So let's just go to the industries where they're already making money. Cool. All right. Also to note, uh, oh yeah, I already said this about the YouTube. I was making YouTube videos throughout this process. So I have videos of me going to California, me struggling throughout the entire time. And then also me, what I'm about to do, which is, uh, still not getting any clients. <laughs> and so still not getting clients. I bought a train VA from some guy. He's, some guy reached out to me and said, Hey, we have trained VAs and we can set appointments for you. I was like, Oh, that's really awesome. You have trained VAs. That's great. And so I hired a trained VA when I hired this guy and this guy was really convincing because I was on the sales call and he's like, you know, we're going to get you trained VAs. And I was kind of running out of money. I had $15,000 saved, but I'm running out of money at this time. And I don't want to keep spending money on things. And he was like, look at my calendar. He shows me his calendar and he has like booked calls every single day. And I was like, Oh yeah, I guess I'm convinced. He said, these VAs are getting me these appointments. And so all I got to do is do this. And so I was already, I'm convinced so it was only like three or $400, which is cool. I pay for the VA and I get the guy and we have a meeting and he says, I'm like, okay, great. Are you going to do cold calling for me? He's like, what do you mean? I'm like, what am I doing for you? I was like, I thought you were trained on getting appointments. And he's like, did I live in a farm? <laughs> he's like, my goal one day is to have my own farm. I'm like, that's great. I love your goal, but how does that help me get a clients and leads and sales? And so I was like, what? In <laughs> I just wasted this money on this VA. And I was like, all right, just start doing cold calling. I just watched a cold calling video. I gave him a cold calling script that I found randomly online. But what I'll tell you is usually they will be worse than you. If someone's training them, that's good. But if someone's not training them or giving them the training, then, and if you're the one training them, they're only going to, going to be worse than you. So if you're bad at cold calling, they're just going to be just as bad as you are. If you're really good, they might be just a little worse than you. So from there, actually, like once I started getting good at getting appointments, I then hired another VA. And I hired from somebody that said that they were trained to VA, right? They still were not trained. And I, the training I gave, put them through was a lot better than the training that they got because I'm a professional at this, right? Well, I became good over time. And so they actually became good because I, I knew what I was doing. And so I was able to help them. But if you're hiring somebody, they're only going to get worse than you. And so if you're not getting any results right now yourself, you can't expect them to get better results for you. So just, just so you know. All right. I woke up, I woke up every morning, not knowing what to do in California. I would just wake up and I was like, okay, what do I do today? I would just call random businesses, like asking about the business, just like not even trying to sell anything, just, just weird stuff. And I just didn't really know what to do. Like, how do I get more appointments? How do I get more clients? Whatever. And in this, I learned a lesson. The only thing you can do is just do the one task that's going to move you forward. The one task is trying to get clients. How do you get more clients? Just get in front of more people. And so if that task is just doing the cold calling, all you have to do, if you just did a whole hundred cold calls every single day and you had a really good script and a really good offer, there's no reason you shouldn't have plenty and plenty and plenty of appointments and clients and leads, whatever. If I did a hundred Facebook messages or whatever, then I probably would have gotten a lot farther, but I didn't know that I just had to do that one action. All you have to do is the one action that's going to move you closer to the goal. And I think a lot of people, they focus on the website or what the market really wants, or just like doing all this, watching more videos on how to do marketing rather than actually just doing the thing and just trying to get out there and trying to get people to say yes to your offer, right? So focus on the one thing. I bought this mini course on how to do some more things. Like there was a mini course on how to get leads for $5 each. And so I was like, let me just try to do Facebook ads to get leads. By the end of February, I had bought all these courses. I did all the stuff, paid for random VAs, and I was down to $4,000. I spent $10,000 in two months just trying to figure things out. So what I would say to that is start with as little money as you can. I just see a lot of people, they're like, oh, I just paid for Air AI. And I was like, okay, how much? I pay $25,000 for Air AI. It, is, it does not cost $25,000 to test whether or not this AI thing doesn't work, which it doesn't. I made multiple videos on it. And I've had people reach out. They said that they, they told me that they spent $25,000. I was like, dude, just try to get your money back as soon as you can. And so people will spend this massive amount of money just trying to get something work something to work. But the best thing you can do is try to sell it first. Start with as little money as possible and try to get money in the door. And if it works for you, then, then you can start spending money because you know it works and we can kind of scale it further. But if we spend $10,000 on this and then $5,000 on that, and then $3,000 on this, and we have this $500 per month software that we're paying for, blah, 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 then 
we're not going to get anywhere because we're just going to diminish through all our money and then we're going to have to go back working on a job, which is what I had to do because I spent all this money and I just trying to figure this out and then nothing was working for me, right? Now, I did buy courses and those courses actually did help me get those clients, right? It wasn't very good and I know that the value that they provided was not what it was worth, but it still helped me got clients and I wouldn't really be here today without those things. But what I would say is like, just try to spend as, I just see so you guys keep doing these, these bad patterns of just spend more than spend more than spend more. How, how, can, well, do you have this thing or do you have that thing? Or what, should I buy this software? I'm like, dude, just, just spend as little as possible. And I can guarantee you can get results with almost no money. Cool. So anyways, spend a little. All right. The thing with the free course that I got or the course that I bought that was like hundred bucks, it taught me about go high level. That's what GHL is, is go high level. And this is in 2021. So this is before most of you guys knew what it was. But I spent three days trying to figure out how to use it. And it was very, I was like, it was so complex. It's kind of hard to understand. And now there's like so many, I don't even know how people figure it out now. There's so many features that I don't even know how to use. But uh, I don't know if, if you get on Go High Level now, it's like trying to learn how to use a spaceship. But anyways, I found out you could do texting and emailing through Go High Level. So I was like, what if I just automated through Go High Level texts? Because everybody reads their texts and not as many people read their emails. I was doing email outreach at the time. What if I just tried texting? So I did. So I blasted out. I sent, I got a list from D7 Lead Finder. I reached out to solar companies and I uploaded a list of 100 people and I sent a text. And the text said, Hey, I just found your company online, thought I'd reach out. I can bring you 10 solar installs this month if you're interested. Can I call you this week? And I booked 10 calls and I got 40 replies within one day. And it was on a Saturday. So I recommend sending messages on Saturdays because people are pretty responsive. I closed two deals in one day that week. And I made $2,800. I finally cracked the code. I know exactly what to do to get unlimited clients. All I got to do is just push it. That's, that's when I realized all I have to do is push out the numbers. Just reach out to 10 people or reach out to 100 people per day. Send a message that's actually compelling. And then get them to respond. Get them on a book call and close the deal. So all I have to do is just keep doing pushing those numbers, right? So I got back from California to Ohio. And I had calls lined up all day, every single day. I remember like the first Monday back, I had like 10 calls lined up back to back to back to back. So... I was able to move out of my parents' base. I made $5,600 that next week, whatever. So now I have like $6,000 in recurring revenue, six dollars $7,000 in recurring revenue. And I was able to move out of my parents' basement into this dream apartment, which is this one right here. And I came actually to this apartment a year before and like was like not manifesting, but like uh, just I took pictures of the apartment. I like toured the apartment acting like I was like going to get the place and just took pictures of like, hey, this I'm going to come here or whatever. And then it took me another like six or eight months to be able to actually move into this apartment, but I was able to move in. And it was like on my vision board and everything it was kind of weird. But and like I said earlier, you'll, you'll get to where you want to go if you just set, set your mind to it, but only to there, right? You'll only get to exactly where you're thinking, okay? So now it was just time to scale to the moon, right? I was able to get this apartment. Now we just have to go up from here. Well, I didn't really know what I was doing. I promised all these solar companies, I you know got 10 solar companies as clients, I promised them I would get them 10, 10 solar installs per month. I took $750 for the ad spend, and then I think an extra $1,000. So it was like $2,000 per month, $750 for ad spend, the rest for me. And little did I know, it costs usually like, at least some guy told me, it costs $1,000 in ad spend just to get one closed deal. I was promising 10 closed deals, and it costs $1,000 to get one closed deal. And I'm only charging $750 with the ad spend. And so I paid for a coach to help me learn how to do the ads, but it didn't work, and then all my cl clients left. Now I had this new fancy apartment and I had no clients to pay for this apartment. And so I could easily get more clients. I just have to do more outreach. The problem is if I do more outreach, get more clients, I would still not get them any good results because I, you know, I was doing the ads and that those, that wasn't working at all. And so I just had to not do that, not just get rid of all the clients and just start back from square one. And I had no money to pay for the pills. So I kind of had to get a job, but I went back to not knowing what to do all day. My mom, was still in California at the time. She was there for like three or four months. So she flies me back out to California. And I, I don't like, I'm going to say this in a minute, but I don't like taking any handouts, but she just wanted the family, the whole family to be there. So we all go out there and hang out. I played video games most of the time, went to the beach, but I didn't really do anything. I didn't really know what to do. I go back to Ohio and go back to doing video work. I don't know what I meant by that. Go through about, well, anyways, eventually I had to get a job, right? I hated the job that I got a job at TQL as a logistics company. and basically was doing 300 cold calls per day. And these 300 cold calls per day were just me saying, Hey, do you have a truck in Miami, Florida that you can go to Jacksonville? No, I don't. Okay. And then you just pick up the phone and do it again. And 
it wasn't that the job was really that bad. It was that I knew what my potential was and I was just making like $8,000 a month. And now I'm back down making $2,000 a month and working longer hours or working like 8 a.m. to 6 p.m. And they wanted your job to be your life. Like they wanted you to be on call after the job, everything like that. And so I was just barely covering expenses. I would show up late every day to work. And I was like, this is, I was just so miserable. Like I hated my life during that time because I was like, I knew my potential and this is where I am. And I cannot get out of this situation because I still have to pay for this apartment. Right. And then one lady, she was like, it was so weird. She, this lady had been there maybe two months longer than I have. And she was kind of training me. We're on this like team together. And she was talking to someone next to her. And she's like, you know, how, what does it take to become a supervisor? She's like, oh yeah, well you stay here for five to eight years and uh, you can maybe become a supervisor one day. You know, if you know other people leave the position, whatever. I was like, and then she said, wow, maybe I can be a supervisor one day. And I was like, okay, we're all making like 35 grand. That's like the base pay, 35 grand. So you're making $35,000 per year. And your job or your goal one day is to maybe make, uh, maybe make the $45,000 as a supervisor five to eight years from now. And I was like, holy cow, like, this is somebody's dream. And like, she's this middle-aged woman. Not that that's bad, but I was like, I just, I went from here. Now I'm back down to here. And like, this is the people that are around me. This is their goal is to become a, a supervisor in seven years. So now what I didn't want to do is I didn't want to take any handouts from anyone else. So I didn't want to, I wanted to be self-sustaining. I, I think a lot of people, which is really annoying. And this is, I'm going to go on a rant right here. A lot of people will always rely on other people. Every single day I have someone reaching out to me saying, Hey Carson, can you drive me here? I'm like, dude, I'm not a show. I have work I have to do every single day. And I work from 9.30 a.m. usually till about midnight. And then I go to bed and then wake up the next morning. I do it all over again. I have an hour and a half break for lunch. And that lunch break, I do 30 minutes of eating, an hour of going to the gym. And then I go back to work every single day, Monday through Friday, right? And then also sometimes Saturday. I'm recording this on a Sunday night and my head hurts so bad. I was been sick all week. I'm doing this for you, right? I'm working every day trying to provide as much value as I can. They come to me and say, hey, Carson, can I borrow some money? Hey, Carson, can I do this? Hey, Carson, can you take me here? Dude, just try to be self-sustaining, right? Most people aren't even self-sustaining. And I didn't want to go back to anybody. I didn't want to like say to my dad, hey, can I borrow some money, dad? Or hey, can I borrow some money, mom? Or I, like, I just want to be able to fend for myself or defend myself, right? And so I would, I think that really did help me because I realized like no one's, no one's going to save you, right? You have to make this work and no one else can save you. Only you can do this. And I would not try to get into the mode of like asking for handouts, but how can I serve other people or how can I just operate myself? And also be as giving as you can to other people. Like remember one of the guys that I'm going to tell a story, I'm trying not to be mean, but there's a guy that asks me for something weekly, right? Hey, can you give me a ride here? Whatever. And I give him a ride. We go out to eat one place and he says, uh, we go out to eat. I'm, I pay for his meal, right? Cause I'm just a nice guy, right? I'm just paying for everybody's meal. <laughs> so I pay for his meal. And then his mom says, Hey, can you get me a meal too while you're there? And he's like, I'm going to get my mom a meal, but she better pay me back. I'm like, what the, <laughs> you, I, okay. This, this woman that gave you life, you would not be here without this woman. And she carried you for nine months. And on top of that, she took care of you for 20 years. And then on top of that, I'm out here giving you, I gave you a meal. I drove you here. And you're not even willing to give your mother a meal, a $10 meal, buy her a meal. Like that's the level of, uh, I want to take, 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 and I don't want to give anything, you know? So try not to do that. Always be, try to rely on yourself because even if you have to go back to a job and you hate your life, whatever, at least you're self-sustaining and at least you're not a burden on somebody else. You know, that's what I didn't want it to be. So, all right. Especially if you're a grown male adult, if you're a grown man, there should be no reason that you're not providing more value than you're taking. You should not be in debt right? Which that means you're taking more value from the world than what you're giving, right? So don't do that. All right. Mistakes. When I signed up for the job that I had just gotten, I made one small error. That error was I had my bank account information. One number was different. Instead of like a six, I put a seven, right? That was it. Which what I didn't know, which is a, a huge flaw in the banking system, apparently, is that that one number difference, that's somebody else's bank account, right? Which means that I don't know why someone hasn't cracked this code yet, but you can just take money out of somebody else's bank account because their the routing number is publicly available on the web. You can look up any bank and say, or chase routing number, it'll tell you the routing number. And then you can just get a bank account at that bank and you can see what the bank account number. If you change the number from an eight to a nine or a four to a five or a four to a three, right? That's somebody else's bank account. So we can take the routing number and the bank account information. And this is just, don't do this. And this is just ad, not advice. This is, uh, <laughs> this is just uh, <laughs> for educational purposes only, right? And I've never done this. So 
if you take that information, you can take money out of that person's bank account just by having their routing number and their account number. And you know the account number because you can see your number and you just put one number lower, one number lower, one number lower, every single number is somebody else's bank account, which is really dumb. A really huge fault. So huge flaw. So with this thing, I put one number different in this bank account information. So that means all my money was going to somebody else's bank account. So it was like the opposite effect. I wasn't taking money from anybody else. Basically all the money I was earning from this job was going to someone else's bank. And so I was like, I'm not getting paid. And I was like reaching out to the HR team. Like, why am I not getting paid? And like, oh, you're getting paid. Like it's getting paid out. And then I realized that. So I just quit my job. I was like, look, I have been working here for a month. I haven't been paid a, a single dollar. I left a note. I act like I was going for lunch, but I left a note saying, hey, I've got bills to pay and I'm going to leave. So I left, I felt amazing. I was like, man, I hated that job, whatever. And so I didn't really know what to do. I was still just at home, not just doing whatever all day. And I was going through Facebook and I saw a post and it said, does anyone need help getting appointments? And I was like, well, you know, I was able to get 10 appointments per day. I just didn't really know how to do the fulfillment, right? I didn't know how to do the Facebook ads for the solar companies. So what if I did appointments for other people? And I looked at the comments. There was like 60, 56 comments on that post, right? Of people saying, I'm interested, I'm interested, I'm interested. And I was like, okay, people are desperately interested in this thing. I was really good at doing that thing. I didn't know that was a thing that you could actually even sell. What if I just tried selling that thing? So what I would tell you is do some market research and see what's actually working for others. Don't take what they're saying in their mouth. They're going to say, Hey, this is what's working really well. See what, what is actually working? What is the market responding to? Because you could say, Hey, I can make hundreds of thousands of dollars doing appointment setting for people. Right. And you could say that and you can show fake screenshots all day long. But what does the market actually say? So this guy posted on this group and there was 60 comments, people saying that they were interested. And so I'm like, okay, well, this is, this is real. People are actually saying that they're interested. They're desperate for this thing. And so I know it's real because he's not even saying how much he's making. He's not even saying that he's a professional, whatever. He just literally just said, does anyone need help? And then people were saying that, yes, they were desperate, right? So I could see for a fact that the market was interested in this. So if I just offer the exact same thing, then people would be interested in my thing too, right? So I posted that the exact same thing myself and on the same exact Facebook group. And I got uh, the 30 or 40 comments on my post and I was able to get my first two clients with my new offer, which is B2B lead generation. This is mid 2021, like maybe June, July, 2021. And so now I have two clients and I'm helping them get appointments, right? And what I would tell you is I didn't really know what the fulfillment was gonna be. I didn't really know how I was gonna help them. I mean, I've done what I've done in the past and I know how, to, how I did it in the past. But what I'll tell you is just try to figure it out first, sell it first, then figure out fulfillment right? So just try to, it's like a Kickstarter campaign, treat every business, try to spend as little money up front as possible and try to get people to pay you first and then fulfill the thing. So if what I did was I just said, yeah, we'll get you 40 appointments a month. Cause that's what I was averaging. I, I know I could probably get that. I was like, Hey, I'll get you 40 appointments a month. And they're like, yeah, sure. Okay, cool. So they paid me. And then I was like, okay, now what do I do? What, how do I help them? Right. And it's much better, even though you have to go through the stress of maybe you don't even know what to do. Maybe you don't even know how to help them. But now you're under that stress of, I have to figure this out. I have to actually get them results. And even if you don't get the results, I can just give them the money back. Just like what I did with the solar companies where I was like, okay, I, I sold them this thing. I told them I was going to get 10 solar jobs. I know I can consistently sell this thing. And I tried to do the fulfillment. It didn't really work. That's okay. I just gave them the money back. All right, cool. Now we're just back at square one. But at least I know it was easy to sell that thing, you know? And so I sold this to them and I just tried to figure it out afterwards. Another example is these solar companies, when I was selling like the, the paid ads and everything, a lot of times people were not interested in paid ads because they tried paid ads in the past. It didn't really work for them. They don't want to get scammed again. They've been scammed before and they were really interested in the traditional methods of marketing. So they really wanted canvassing teams. A canvassing team is a B2B or sorry, a door-to-door -door sales team, D2D, door-to-door -door sales team. So that you're just going door-to-door -door selling solar. And if they were going door-to-door -door selling solar, they, for some reason, were way more interested in that rather than the paid ads. So then I just said, okay, I took that market research. That's what they were telling me. And I took that and I said, what if I just started pitching that? So I reached out to people and I said, Hey, I can help you build a canvassing team, a door to door sales team. If you're interested, are you free to test something this week? Every single person said, yes, I'm interested. I'm interested. I'm interested. They were calling me desperate. Like, okay, how do you do this? And I was like, and I just started making up stuff. <laughs> I was like, yeah, we'll build you a team of three people. We go out to the affluent neighborhoods in your city. We get the permits in your city. And this is just stuff that I kind of learned working at that door to door sales job. I didn't really know anything about this. I didn't know anything about permits or anything. Uh, we'll get permits in your city, whatever, to be able to do door to door sales. And we'll create the scripts for you. We will get the leads for you. We'll manage the team and you just pay us a commission plus a, like $3,000 as a setup fee you know, per month, whatever. Right. And they're like, yeah, cool. We'll just send the contract over and let's get started. And so I had people back to back saying, yeah, let's get started. Let's get started. 
I had no clue how to fulfill this. I didn't send out any contracts. I just spent like two days trying to learn how do I do door-to-door -door sales. I was looking for other people that might have been good at this. I was like, hey, does anyone else know how to do door-to-door -door sales? I only did it for like two days. I didn't really figure it out. If I would have done it for a week, just like I said before with the, the videography thing, I knew exactly what they wanted, but I just didn't know how to fulfill for them. But really the fulfillment is it was extremely easy. It's really easy to fulfill for videographers. I just didn't know how to do it. And I, was, I didn't really want to do the research. And I was like, okay, well, if I don't know now, I'm not going to really know in the future. So I guess I'm, I'm kind of stuck here. So I could have done a week's worth of research. I only did it for like two days. I didn't really go anywhere. And so I didn't sell anything, but they were desperately interested in that. So if anyone wants to take that offer, you could take that offer and you could probably pitch them right now and figure it out. But that's another example of just sell it first and then try to figure it out from there. Cool. Anyways, my era. So I started getting clients left and right. I was getting so many appointments to people. I was just reaching out on Facebook. That was the best platform for me. I was getting the highest quality calls from there. I was also doing SMS outreach and some LinkedIn outreach, but different platforms will give you a different quality of appointments. So Facebook, I was getting like, let's say one or two appointments per day, not a, not a ton, but 40% of the appointments would close. So I was like, it was way worth it for me to only take on one or two sales calls per day and close one every other day, right? So then, SMS, I would book 10 sales calls and I'll only close one out of 10. And so you're doing like 10 hours of calls and closing one out of 10 hours rather than, you know, just doing Facebook, I'm doing one hour call and closing one out of that one hour. It was well worth it to do that rather than this. So I just started sticking to the strategies that were getting me the higher quality calls. A lot of people were asking me to partner up with them. This was a huge problem. So I, I was actually really good at what I was doing because I was doing SMS and nobody else was doing SMS in my industry. And all the other guys were just doing cold email. And this was when cold email was actually really primitive. There was no, there wasn't a lot of gurus in the space. Everyone was just, the way that we did cold email in the, in the beginning, back in my day, there was, you know how we have email warming now? Before, the only way you could do email warming was you just sign up for newsletters. So we sign up for all these newsletters of like, you know, just stock picks, just people that send you emails every single day. So now you're getting emails coming to you and then you just reply to some of them every day. And that's how you warm up an email. And that's the only thing you could do. And so it was really, really interesting. So they're doing email, these primitive ways. And I had SMS and at the time SMS was extremely easy and it's a lot harder now, but it was so easy. You could just text anyone you wanted. You could text them as much as you wanted. It was pretty cheap and you could just get hundreds and hundreds of appointments and nobody else was doing it. And so I had these systems that nobody else had. And I mean, people could just copy me, but nobody else had them. And so people are coming to me like, how are you doing it? How are you doing it? And they wanted to partner with me. Now, when everyone was saying partner with me, I would just say yes to all of them. It was like, oh, these are just more opportunities for me to make money. Now, no one had the systems that I had. And so the huge gurus, and I can tell you, I can tell you some big numbers, some big people that came to me that you would know their names and they're asking for my help. And they constantly, they still ask me to this day for my help, right? And I would just take on all these partnerships. Now, the reason for that is that they, they didn't want to pay me. That's why they wanted to partner up because they knew the value that I had and they just didn't really want to afford the service. So there was a guy that was like, he was like, yeah, we'll partner up and we'll pay you, right? We'll, we'll get you some money in the door. So I was like giving my systems, showing them how to set it up, managing their team a little bit. And they were getting leads and sales in the door. And I was like, okay, how am I going to get paid? And they're like, oh, yeah, yeah, we'll get you, we'll get you paid, right? And what I'd say is I would try not to partner with really anybody because most of the time I was partnering with these people and you're just kind of working with them for free, for completely free. And they just want to take all your value. And if they're coming to you asking to partner with you, it's because you have more value than they have. And they're trying to take something from you, right? And so if they're not willing to pay up front, usually they're not committed at all. And any, any deal that I've worked on where they weren't willing to pay me up front, it was usually a lack of their commitment and it just never worked out. So uh, there was a guy that did this to me the other day. That's so when the sun's going down. I'm going to turn on this light. This, this guy the other day I was on a call with and I've, I've done thousands of sales calls. And this guy was like, uh, hey, so we can work together. And I was like, okay, it's, it's between three to $5,000 you know, our package that what we can do for you for your specific company. And he was like, well, how about we work on a commission deal and I can help you make $28,000 in a month. And I was like, that's never going to happen. I'm not doing that. I've done this. I've done a thousand of these calls. This is how it works. You either pay me up front or we don't work together at all. And it just didn't work out. Right. So most of the time they only want to partner up because they know that they're not good. They know that you are actually good, but they don't really want to pay you up front. And it would, even if I was able to get this guy a ton of deals and I was making $28,000 commission, he would have never, ever paid me that $28,000. I worked with some other people and they're like, Hey, I just want to work on a paper call basis and I'm willing to pay you, but you know, I just been scamming in the past. Like, oh yeah, I understand that. I've been scamming in the past too. Let me work for, with you. So we were doing a paper call. Then not pay me anything up front. I set up the campaign. I start reaching out to people. I was getting them a ton of appointments and they ghost me. They, don't, they just, they, they never respond. They never respond to any of the appointments that once they get it for free, they realized that there's no value there, right? Where, well, maybe there is value. 
but if they can get it for free, they don't think that there's value. And so dirt is probably more valuable than gold in terms of what it can do for us, where we can kind of grow food in it and we can, fruit can come out of it, right? But gold doesn't really do that for us. And yet we value gold a lot more. And so like there's value there, but if everyone was giving out gold for free, then no one would really value it, right? And dirt is just abundant. It's everywhere. It's free. So if you're giving away appointments for free or working on just a commission deal, no, you're not willing to put money up front, then they see the value as $0. And so they're just not going to work long term. So that's just what I found. The only partnership that worked for me was a guy with Keaton Walker, who also has a YouTube channel. You should check him out. And I went to him and I said, Hey, I know you have a group of you do coaching and he's really good at doing ads and helping uh, his clients, but he was bad at actually getting clients. He didn't really have systems for getting clients. And so he had already had a coaching group and they were having trouble getting clients. I was like, okay, I'm good at getting clients, but I'm bad at the ads. You're good at the ads, but bad at getting clients. So we both have a unique value here. How about we partner up? He was getting 60. I was getting 40 because it was already his clients and he was, he already had a bigger audience than me and everything. And so we'll work together on this. And it worked out just because and he also didn't like doing partnerships either, but it worked out because we both had unique values that we were adding to the table. And I went to him with this partnership rather than, and there was a mutual benefit to this rather than people just coming to me and saying, Hey Carson, we should work together. We should partner up and I'll give you a percentage, whatever. And then no one ever pays you, right? I know there's a long rant about partnerships, but just don't screw yourself over, you know? All right. So I worked with a guy named Andrew and he wanted help with his clients and he already knew what he was doing and I knew that I was good too, but this guy was a guru in the space, right? And so I was like, oh, I want to work with him because he's a guru and he knows what he's doing. He flies me out to New Jersey. We work on projects in New Jersey and all this stuff. I help him with some projects here and there, help him set up some campaigns. I write really good copy for him and all this stuff for his email campaigns, all that jazz. And I was seeing how he operates and I realized he, you know, he's his guru, right? He's his online guru. And I thought, this guy knows what he's doing. He's, he's got it made, right? When I get to the airport in New Jersey, he picks me up in the smallest little S10 truck, right? With the biggest speakers, nothing against him. I'm not trying to, I had beef with him, whatever. It's, I don't have anything against him, right? The, the biggest speakers, they were on the side of the, the car. It's where like, I was like crammed into this car. There's like trash everywhere, huge speakers. And he's boom, 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 boom. And I'm like, what the, <laughs> what is this? And this little dinky the truck with 800,000 miles, right? And that's what he picks me up. And I'm like, okay, this guy, <laughs> I thought he had like um, his life figured out. He had like 27 VAs. There's no reason to have 27 VAs. So he's spending like, he's spending like more money than he's making coming in. He's working on these random projects and he was good at what he did, but he just wasn't like what, what I thought he was, you know? So anyways, I was supposed to take over his business. His goal was like to work on some real estate and stuff. And I was going to take over his like cold email business. It kind of fell through, didn't work out. And I still needed to pay rent. And he didn't want to pay me unless he knew that I was going to bring him more clients. And so we kind of just had to split our separate ways. Like I had to pay rent, but he wasn't willing to pay me. He wanted me to like work a commission, which I already tried in the past and really worked before for me. So we had to kind of split ways. So now I thought that if this guy didn't accept me, that this guy that was a guru, then why would anybody else accept me? And so I kind of ended my B2B. So I stopped doing B2B at the end of the year, at the end of 2021, I was like, well, if this deal isn't going to work out and um, my clients aren't happy, I guess, or I mean, my clients were happy, but they're just like, I was like, I guess I'm not really not that good. If that guy doesn't really accept me, then I guess I'm really not that good at this. And why would anybody else accept me if this guy doesn't really accept me, right? If this guy's really good at it, you know, if, hopefully that makes sense. So I kind of stopped doing that because I was like, this is not going to work. So he's way better than me. I'm not that good. And I don't have much value to add to the world because, you know, if he's better and he's going to get more clients, then why would anyone choose me over him? So I start going back to DoorDash or I, I didn't, this is actually the first time doing DoorDash. My friend was like, Hey, you should do DoorDash for some reason. He was just telling me I should. And so I started doing DoorDash. You can actually make a good amount of money. If anyone's out there, if you just need money right now, DoorDash is a pretty good option. I'm not, don't knock it. Right. It's if you want, like, cause working at a job, you got to do a week worth of it. So I set up for an interview, that's which is a week away. And then a week after that, then you're actually going to get a call saying, hey, the interview was good. All right, we can move forward from here. And then after that, you have to wait another two weeks before you actually get hired onto the job. You have to wait a month before you start getting paid. And then two weeks after that, you actually start getting paid. You get your first paycheck after two weeks, right? And sometimes even three weeks. So it could be two months before you actually just get paid your first check. DoorDash, you can get paid the first day. You just you sign up for an account, start DoorDashing. I was getting paid $150, $200 a day, not bad. Uh, but still only making $2,000, maybe $2,500 a month. And I got into some debt a little bit just because I was just trying to keep my head above water. I had this expensive apartment to pay for. Had a couple months where I wasn't working, just trying to figure out the stuff. And yeah, I was just, I was just trying to keep my head above water, just trying to pay rent. I found a way to like, 
uh, pay off my card with another card, you know, with my credit cards. I was working 10 to 12 hours a day doing DoorDash. Now, that's the only way to make $200 a day on DoorDash is actually just to work 10 hours a day and do as many deliveries as you can. And any free time I had, I was just trying to figure out how to make more money online, just trying to work on with just like small clients. Like maybe I can do SMS this way or maybe I can do cold email. Just trying to figure out like new strategies, whatever. And this girl was getting in my way. And I will tell this just as a piece of advice for everybody, okay? Every, I'm going to kind of remove my head so you can see this. Everyone around you is constantly going to want to take from you. It can be, okay, I'm just, I'm, I'm a guy, so I'm going to talk about my experience uh, working with uh, girls, but this could also be, you know, if you have a boyfriend, if you are a girl, they will be your biggest headache, okay, because they're going to want to take time and energy and money away from you. So limit your time the best you can, but also still be giving. So it's kind of a double-edged sword here. So uh, I had this girlfriend at this time and it was like I would work 10 hours a day on DoorDash and then it's like Carson come and hang out with me Ugh, what the, do, doing what what are we going to do just to sit and watch movies right <laughs> it wasn't like I was getting anything out of this relationship right and so come hang out with me all right so I'll come what, what, we're hanging out cool what are we going to do uh, I'm, I'm still in debt what are we going to do because no, you wanted to hang out because we needed to make sure this relationship works out whatever right okay we're going to go to uh, Chick-fil-a cool let's go to Chick-fil-a spend 20 bucks on Chick-fil-A that I don't have, right? So you're taking my time away from being able to make more money. And you're also taking my money by making me spend money on this food. Okay. Now let's, let's go eat Chick-fil-A at this park. Why do we, all right. So we drive 20 minutes to, to park at this park, to walk for 10 minutes, to sit at this bench, just so we can eat the Chick-fil-A, just so we can get up, walk 10 minutes back to the car, drive 20 minutes back to home. Right, so we're spending an extra hour just so we can eat in some that's cool place, some romantic place, what, whatever, right? And so we get back home. Okay, now, now what, right? Let me. I try to get on my laptop. I would open my laptop slowly, trying to get back on, and let me do some work, right? No, no. What are you doing? Why are you paying attention to me? Okay, all right, sorry. Close the laptop. Whatever. All right, what do you want to do? They get on TikTok. With the, why are you on TikTok? <laughs> well, I thought we were supposed to. Okay, let's just watch. Let's just watch a movie. Okay, we're watching a movie. Back on TikTok. Right, okay, I'm just gonna go home now. Why are you going, you know, and it's like, they're just going to take and take and take and take and take. Now, not just a girlfriend, but also a boyfriend or also everyone around you. Now, the thing is, we still want to be giving because that is your goal in life. Like I said earlier, I don't know if I mentioned this too much, but your whole purpose in life is just to give to others. Everything you do, it'll never get easier. It's never going to get more fun for you. It's going to be as hard as it possibly can be for the rest of your entire life, but your life is always going to be giving. Cool. Just accept that as a fact. <laughs> okay. And you will, the Bible says, better is it to give than to receive. So you'll feel better giving than just, you know, taking from other people. But just know that that is going to be your whole life is just giving. Now, there are going to be people that will take more from you and they just want to keep taking more from you. So it's like the relationship doesn't help you in any way where, you know, sometimes, you know, someone's on the side of the road, you give them money or someone needs a meal, whatever, you just pay for everybody's meal, whatever, stuff like that. You should always do that. You always be as nice as you can, especially to people that gave to you as you were, you were a kid, like your mother or your father, right? And, but... You know, you don't owe this girl anything other than, I mean, I'm sure most men would say, you know, they're giving them something, right? Uh, you're getting something out of it, you know. But for the most part, you know, that's all you're getting out of it. And they're just taking money and time and energy away from you. And then when you're in a survival mode like this, where you don't have money, you don't have time, you don't have the energy, and they just want to keep taking it from you. You're just going to live in your growth. You're not going to be able to do anything. And it, just, it was just so frustrating where I was like, I'm just trying to, dude, I'm just trying to get out. I just don't want to go back to my parents' basement. I just don't want to be poor still. I don't want to stay, stay poor. And you, your goal is to go eat Chick-fil-A and waste three hours of my life. My goal is just to make some money just so we don't have to, you know, sit in this hellhole, right? And it was, it's just really frustrating, right? Okay, anyways, <laughs> sorry for that rant. I wanted to rant about that because that will be a huge problem for a lot of you where a girl or a guy will take a lot of time or energy or friends. This could all be just a group of friends with like, Oh, Hey, let's hang out. And they will constantly, and the time is the biggest thing. Cause it's just a lot of little things, right? Oh, let's go here, go here. And then you waste a whole week and you're like, where did that week go? I didn't even do any, I didn't even work at, the, at all this week. And so let's, let's go out to eat here and let's just go play basketball here. And that's, that's cool. It's okay to do those things. But when it's taking up your entire life and you can't actually provide any value to anybody else and you're taking more than you're giving and they're taking from you, then you're kind of losing, right? Cool. All right. So this girl's in my ear, talking my ear off all the time. I'm working 12 hours a day doing DoorDash and whatever I have to, well, any time that I do have the work that's the girl's not trying to get me to do something, then I'll try to work, right? But I need something else to work. I just need something to work because I either going to stay in debt. I, I, I worked out the math. If I still do DoorDash for the next 
six to eight months, I might have a couple thousand dollars saved after six days. after paying all my bills and everything. I might, right? So like, this is not going to work for me long term. This is not going to help me. So at the time, also, someone told me, you know, I don't think you're really giving any, everything you have to God. And so, you know, when you're when you are trying to do everything you can and nothing's working for you, you're like, well, this obviously, you're like, God, why me? Why is this not working for me? And I was thinking, you know, your reputation is on the line, God. Like, I represent you. And, you know, if I misrepresent you, then that's my fault. And that's, that, you know, the Bible says that's sin. The, what's the sin? It's called, like, uh, t- taking the Lord's name in vain. That's, that doesn't mean saying, oh, my God, isn't the sin. The sin is saying, uh, I'm a child of God. Also, F you, screw you. Your mother is uh, whatever, right? <laughs> and just saying a whole bunch of mean things about something or going and murdering somebody or committing something else or, like, talking bad about other people. And so if you're saying, I represent God, I'm a Christian, but also all these other things, then you're misrepresenting God, right? And so you're taking on the Lord's name and taking on the Lord's name in vain. So that's what that means. And so, God, I'm representing you, but like, how, how am I supposed to represent you? And then my life is just falling apart, you know, everywhere it can. It just keeps falling apart. And so, you know, someone's saying, I don't think you're really giving everything you have to God. So it's like, God, look, this is, here's what I'm going to do. I'm pretty competitive for some reason. I took that uh, t- personally. And so I said, look, I have $1,000 in my DoorDash bank account. I owe $2,500 on a credit card. I'm going to give you this $1,000. I'm still going to owe $2,500 on this card. And I'm just going to give it to you and we're just going to see what happens. All right? And if, if nothing works and I gave this money to you, then that's your name that gets diminished or gets devalued. I, I gave everything I have to you. And so if you want, if you want your name to if that's what the representation of your name to be, then God would let that happen. But if not, God just help me out, right? So I gave everything I had. And then I was going to stop doing DoorDash. And I was like, okay, I have to stop. And I just have to, I have to take maximum action. I have to do a massive change. So I'm just going to try to get more clients and just stop doing DoorDash. I delete the app. And I realized the Andrew guy I worked with, he wasn't really that good at what he was doing. I was actually better than him than at writing copy. I was getting better results on the campaigns I was doing. The only reason that he was a guru is because he just had a bigger ego. And he said, hey, look, guys, I'm good. I'm a guru. He created a Facebook group. He had a little YouTube channel. And he said, hey, look, I'm the good guy. I'm, I'm a guru, and I'm really good at this, and you should buy from me. So the only difference between me and him was that I was slightly better than he was, but he just professed to be better than I was. And that's how most of these people work, is that there's a lot of people. I am better than a lot of these gurus out there, right? I, I can give some names, but I'm not going to. There's people that make a ton more money than I do but they're not better than me at all. But the only reason you choose them is because they say that they make more money. And so I did this too. When I was getting started, there was a guy that was making like $25,000 a month. And this guy that had this program it was called like the million dollar program. So I was like, okay, this guy, I don't even know if he was a millionaire, but he said it was a million dollar program. And so he probably is making a million dollars, which means he's probably better than this guy because he's only making 25 and this guy's making a million dollars. And so I made the decision to go for the guy that was making a million dollars, even though it was more money, even though he had a, a worse offer. But I was like, okay, well, this guy has he's a millionaire. So this guy probably knows what he's doing more than this other guy. Right. But the reality is usually they're only better at making themselves more known. And so they're, if I say, if I'm, if I have a bigger ego and I try to make myself a little more prideful or try to show off a little more, that's usually beneficial for you actually <laughs> works in your business favor. So if I say a one week, I say, Hey, look, I make this much money. And everyone's like, Oh, that's really cool. So then people buy from me. And so then I'm making more money. I say, hey, look, now I'm making this much money. And everyone buys from me. And hey, look, I make this much money. And so you just keep doing that. And then you're like, I'm the expert. So now everybody comes to you because he's, okay, this guy's making way more, way more money than this, this other guy. And so I should probably go to him because he's making way more money. The only reason he does that is because he makes his name more known. He just tries to have a bigger ego than all the other guys. And that's all really all it takes to be a wizard. I have other videos where I've explained this in the past, whatever. So I said to myself, why couldn't I just be an expert? If this guy was an expert, but he was worse than I am. Why can't I just start making my own videos, make my own Facebook group? So I started doing that. And I started reaching out to people on Facebook and Facebook groups, and I was getting consistent calls. And I just started making a few videos. And within the first week, I was able to get some calls coming in of me not doing DoorDash and me just trying to do this. So all it takes to become a guru is just, all you do is sell the step behind you and people will follow you. And everyone's looking for a wizard. So if you were able to get some clients online, you just sell, hey, I was able to get some clients online. Does, does anyone want to know how to make your, get your first client online? And people are willing to pay you for that, right? So all you got to do is sell the step behind you and you just have to make yourself known by just putting yourself out there. Hey, I'm the expert. I'm the wizard. Come to me and people will start coming to you. And then the more people come to you, then the more people will come to you, right? The more you're getting paid, the more you'll get paid. Kind of weird. Cool. Now, that week, 
I was also thinking about certainty for some reason. I had moments in my life where I was certain about something and it just happened. So for example, I was playing basketball and I was uh, shooting hoops and I was not getting anything in the hoop, right? And I was like, why am I so bad? I was like, I maybe got three out of 50 shots in uh, from the three point line. And I was like, I'm so bad at this, I'm so bad. And then I just changed what I said to myself. And I just said, I can hit every shot in the court. I turn around and put it, put it up and it goes in. I was like, okay, that's one out of one. And I just missed three out of 50, <laughs> right? I only got three out of 50, right? And so let me try it again. I can hit every shot in the court. Put it up, goes in again, two out of two. Again, three out of three, four, five, six, seven. I was nine out of 10, when right before that, three out of 50. And all I did, nothing else changed. I wasn't like changing my form, whatever. I wasn't getting any closer. Still past the three-point line. And all I said to myself is I can hit every shot in the court. And I was able to get way more shots in just by saying that one thing. It's pretty interesting. So I was like certain that I could do this. And then another thing was, I remember walking into a place and I was like, I'm going to see someone I know here. I just don't, don't know why, but I feel like I'm going to see someone I know here. And guess what? I saw someone I knew there, <laughs> which is really interesting. So you have like these synchronicities, these things that happen. And it's just a matter of a certainty, right? And I think, and people call it faith. And I believe that, you know, in the Bible we call it faith, where if I have faith in something, if you have faith of the mustard seed, it'll grow and you'll be able to move mountains, right? But what I see it as like just certainty in almost any area of life. Because there's people that are bad people that uh, that are, let's just say, an atheist and they don't believe in anything, which is, if you do that, that's, that's on you, whatever. But how can they also, or let's yeah, say someone that's a Satanist, right? Someone that's really bad. And they can have certainty too, and it'll still work for them. They could say the same thing I said about basketball, and they can still make it. So it's like, it's not just a, a biblical thing. I think it's just a, a rule of law, a law of nature that God made, you know? So if I'm just certain about something, it might happen, or I, I, it's way more likely to happen if I'm just more certain of that thing. If you feel like you're more likely to get in a car crash, you're probably more likely to get in a car crash, right? Or if I feel like I am going to make a certain amount of money this week, then I'll probably make more money this week, which is what I said to myself. Like, what if I just said to myself, I am certain I'm going to make $5,000 this week. So I said, I'm going to make $5,000 this week. And I was 100% certain that it would happen. And guess what? That week I made $5,000 that first week of doing this. And if I was 100%, if, if you're 100% certain and you're willing to go all in, you'll be get farther than anyone else, get farther than anybody else that's doing the same thing. And again, wherever whatever the limit is of what you say, you'll probably get to that limit. So, you know, this week I was saying to myself, you know, we have weeks where we'll have days we make $10,000 a day, but on average we make about fifteen dollars to $20,000 a week. And so I was just hoping that this week we'd make another $15,000. So I said, I'm going to make $15,000 this week. I'm going to make $15,000 this week, All right? So I kept saying that to myself. At the beginning of the week, we had a lot of calls in the beginning, but we didn't have almost no calls towards the end of the week. So Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, almost no calls. Monday, Tuesday, a lot of calls. We made like, I think $7,000 Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. And I was like, I don't know if we're going to be able to get to 15000 because we really don't have any sales calls Thursday and Friday. And But I was like, all right. No, but no, I'm going to say to myself, I'm going to make fifteen dollars I'm going to make fifteen dollars No questions asked. I'm going to make $15,000 this week, right? Guess what? Thursday, we made $5,000. The next day, Friday, we made another $5,000. Saturday, we made $1,500, $2,000. So, and I can prove it to you, I can show you right now. And it, I was like, holy cow, that actually worked, right? Where I just kept saying to myself, <laughs> which is funny, I keep surprising myself. And it's like, it works every single time, almost every time, right? Where, you know, when I was playing basketball, it was nine out of 10. I didn't get all 100% of the shots in, but nine out of 10, when before that it was like three out of 50, I'd much rather take that just by having confidence in myself or believing in, believing in yourself. <laughs> I hate that, but if I'm 100% certain, it's way more likely to happen. I can, oops, prove to you. Here's like the payouts. Thursday and Friday, boom, let's see. Thursday, 4,700. Well, that's like after the, the fees that, you know, Stripe takes. Friday, 4,700. Uh, Saturday, 18 or 1,100. So, see? Uh, anyways, if you're 100% certain it'll happen, it'll happen. And even if you're not 100%, if you just act like you're 100% certain, it will happen. So, for example, I had a guy I was on a call with, and he was targeting landscaping companies. And I was like, I've never worked with landscaping companies, but I was pretty certain that I was able to get him a good result because I know that it was really easy to find their phone numbers. It's really easy to reach out to them. And if we have a good offer, we're going to get a ton of clients. And so I was just 100% certain on the call. I was like, hey, look, man, this is going to work. We're going to get you a ton of calls. This is such an easy campaign. I can guarantee you that this is what will work, right? So he was like, okay, I guess if you're certain, then I'll, I'll move, move forward with you because you sound like you know what you're talking about. Because the most thing is people don't want to move forward if they are hesitant themselves. So if you're hesitant, then they're going to be hesitant too. So if you don't have any results, you don't have any proof, and you, you don't have any guarantee, and you're like, I don't know if oh, this is actually going to work for you, then they're not going to move forward with you because they have some other guy who is more certain, who has better case studies, and actually believes that they're actually going to be able to help them. So if I come and I say, hey, look, I'm 100% certain, I'm the best at this, and only I can get you the best results. And so come, follow me, right? So... I told this guy I was going to be able to help them, and he moved forward. 
I the campaign actually didn't do as well as I thought it was going to do. Like I've done campaigns where like it, it did a lot better than I thought, but this campaign did not do perform as well as I thought it was going to. But he still moved forward with me because I was just 100% certain that it was going to work. And I was like, look, I'm I'm going to close this guy. This guy's super. We are going to be able to get a ton of results. And I actually believed it. Uh, didn't do as well as I thought again, but just having that certainty was able to help me. So it just kept getting better from here. The clients I had before, they would come and they would stay for like three months and they would leave. That's why I kind of stopped in December at the end of 2021 because I was like, you know, if the clients keep coming, then they leave, whatever. But a lot of times when people aren't retainer, they're always going to leave after three months. That's just kind of a rule of nature where anyone that has a retainer client, it usually just doesn't work out long term unless you have a really, really, really good deliverability. But what I loved is I loved AppSumo and you could buy on, if you don't know AppSumo, you just buy one time deals. So you buy a deal for one time of like a hundred bucks and you get to keep that software forever. And I hated paying any monthly subscription. And so I was like, what if I just sold this as a one-time deal? What if I just sold a system where I help you create a system to get unlimited appointments and you'll have to pay me one time and then you'll be able to keep it forever. And if you want your money back, you'll get your money back and you get to keep it even if you get your money back. So I was able to close $8,900 the first week of doing this. And I usually say I, was, I made $8,900 in two weeks. How it actually happened, I made $8,900 within the first week and then the next week I was just fulfilling on the clients. So I probably could have closed more, but I just you know, was spending time fulfilling on the clients. And so what I'll tell you, this is a really good piece of advice. Everything I've done up until this point, the only reason I am here today is because I stole from everybody else. <laughs> That's it. So steal ideas. I stole from AppSumo. They had the one-time deals. I loved it. And I was like, why don't I just apply this to my company? There was the, the guy that posted and said, hey, does anyone need help getting appointments? I didn't even know that was an offer. I would not be here today if I just didn't see that post. And I was like, let me just copy him. I copied him. I stole it from him, right? I don't know where he is today. He's probably not even doing this anymore. I stole it and I was able to get here. Just, you know, so... You can steal from other people. The guy that made Papa John's, he I was watching a podcast and he said he just worked at like 10 different pizza places and just took the best advice from each pizza place. Like one place, they gave him garlic butter. And he's like, oh, that's really good. The other place, they had like a sweet a sauce within the pizza. And so, okay, that's really good. They went to Domino's. Domino's just had really good systems. Like they were able to get it out really fast. They took the systems and they were able to create a really good pizza joint that blew up super fast just because... They were taking ideas from, they just stole from everybody else and applied it into one good product. So in April, I closed $6,000 in deals. Okay, so I made $8,900 in March. April, I closed another $6,000 worth of deals. And Lucas, the guy I worked with before who did soccer, he said, hey, can you come down to Florida for two weeks and can you record a video for me? I'm willing to pay you $10,000. Of course, I would love to come to Florida for two weeks and uh, be on vacation and make a couple videos for you for $10,000. Why not? So I made $16,000 in April. Now, while I was in Florida, the girl that I was with, she just, I'm not going to say, never mind, I'm not going to say anything about, about her, but uh, we, we break up, right? <laughs> we go our separate ways. And so thank God, because now I can work more, right? I don't have to worry about this burden on my back. And okay, I'm not, just not her. Any friends can be a burden. Any family members can be a burden. They can just keep taking from you. It's, anyways. Uh, so I was able to consistently grow after this breakup just because I now I have more time to actually work on this stuff. And I don't have to go and eat Chick-fil-A in a park every day. So growth. Now I keep selling clients uh, by doing more cold outreach, uh, but I stay focused more on the content. Well, I started focusing more on content on YouTube. After three months of doing YouTube content, I was getting about 40, 60 calls per month from YouTube. I was making about two videos per week and I was making about $25,000 per month at this point. And I was getting good and people were started copying me. So that, and, you know, this is the advice I give you to copy me and I do recommend that. But it was kind of getting annoying. Where, you know, I would create a message and the message would work extremely well. And then people would say, I already heard this. I was like, dude, come on. <laughs> and so <laughs> people would just like see my messages and they would just copy my message and they would just send it out to everybody. And so then when I actually reached out to them, they're like, oh, I already heard this in the past. I was like, dang it, dude. So people just kept stealing my stuff. It was kind of annoying. So I started uh, looking at other marketers, like old school marketers, 80s and 90s, and just trying to see what did they do and how can I apply those things to today? Because something I learned is just steal from other people in the past and then apply it today and it'll get better results. And so they would, they had a really good piece of advice, which is think of what you could do if you had to, if you could scam anybody and no, the government couldn't catch you, what would you do? How would you scam them? If you could, if you had to get everyone to respond to your message, what would you say? If the government chopped off your head, if not every single person responded to the message, what would you say? And so putting it in that framework makes it really easy to kind of come up with a really, really good message. And so what I would do if I were you is try to sound so good that it sounds like a scam and you'll get way more clients and no one will even challenge you on your offers. So for example, my offers before my messages, 
I've got a system to get you 40 appointments per month if you're interested. A good message that I had also was I've got a one-click appointment system if you're interested. I thought it was clever, right? One click or something that's making it something that's hard, which is appointments, making it sound easy with one click. But you know, still I was getting appointments, but people were like, oh, I already heard this. You know, people were just stealing my messages. So then it became, I'll get you 120 appointments this month, and if it doesn't work, I'll literally pay you three thousand dollars. Right? It sounds like the biggest scam where you're gonna give me 120 appointments and if it doesn't work, you're gonna pay me money. How does that even work? And so people are like, people just say, how does it work, right? I will get you more results faster and I will remove all the risk. And what this is, is that a lose-win guarantee. So even if you lose, even if you don't get the 120 appointments, you still win because you'll get $3,000. And so nobody is going to, one, I have more results. I have like testimonies and everything already now. So the people that are taking my messages, they don't have testimonials unless they're lying about it. And then two, now I have this really good message and no one's going to challenge me. No one's going to try to steal this message because no one wants to offer that, right? And there's ways of offering this. And I've mentioned this in other videos of offering it with, I've never had to pay anyone $3,000 actually. It's just, uh, there's a way of kind of positioning your message. You're not, not going to scam anybody, right? You're obviously not scamming, but how do we make it to where it sounds so good that they think it's a scam so much so that they actually do respond. So anyways, all right. Now, YouTube. I wanted to go all in on YouTube because uh, I was growing a lot on there. So I decided to pay for a consulting call with a guy who works with Mr. Beast. He works with all the major YouTubers, right? And he gave me some really good advice. The best piece of advice he gave me was just like, hey, obviously you want to make the best videos that you can, but also just talk to yourself in 2020, right? Talk to yourself. You know, you're basically making videos for yourself two or three years ago. So just make videos for yourself too. Like just actually speak to yourself. And so... I took that advice and this is actually this, the video I'm making right now, I'm just trying to give advice to, you know, 2020 Carson, 2019 Carson, just telling Carson myself you know, what I wish I knew back then, you know, and hopefully that helps you guys out because you're probably where I was two or three years ago, four years ago, right? So talk to them, All right? That's what they were saying. So I also, again, trying to steal other people's ideas. They also give me advice of like, just look into other industries, adjacent industries and use their ideas. So if you look at Minecraft YouTubers, I don't really watch Minecraft YouTubers since I was 13 years old, but I, when I look back at the channels, I look at them and they're like, the best performing video is I spent a thousand days trying hardcore Minecraft. And I was like, what, what even is that? Right. But everyone was saying I spent a thousand days trying hardcore Minecraft. And that was like almost every Minecraft YouTuber, their best performing video was that video, just that exact title. So I was like, what if I tried that? I mean, it's been about three years since I've been doing SMMA. That's about a thousand days. So what if I said I spent a thousand days trying SMMA? So I made that my video. I try to make it the best I possibly could edit it to the ninth degree, whatever, uh, or the nine yards, whatever it's called. I don't know. <laughs> All nine yards, the, ni the nines, do the nine. What do you, I don't know, anyways. <laughs> so I did everything I possibly could in that video and I uploaded it just talking to myself three years ago and I uploaded it, didn't really get any traction at first but then started picking up a lot of views, more and more, it got to like 10,000 views in a couple of days which was more than any other video I had and it was able to grow to 100,000 views which to me was pretty viral. And I was able to get 75 sales calls that first week of January. So this is like late, I posted I think on December 31st and so it was get 75 sales calls the first week of January and I got like three or 400 calls in January alone. And so that was the first month I was able to hit like $50,000 per month uh, just from, and I, now I focused all my attention on just doing YouTube. So I don't even do any cold average for myself anymore. I do it for clients still, but not for myself. And I'm able to get uh, three to 400 calls a month just from YouTube. So I would say to you, and another piece of advice is focus on inbound. Once you start getting results for yourself, just focus on actually trying to make yourself a wizard, make, make yourself the guru, make yourself well-known because whoever has the biggest ego is really just going to win more. If I, like I said, if I just start getting some clients, and I say, Hey, I'm really good at getting clients. Everyone's going to come to me like, Oh, can you help me get clients? And then I get more clients. And I say, Hey, look, this is how much money I'm making. And then just by showing how much money I'm making, people will pay me more money. So now I can say, Hey, this is how much money I'm making. And then you can just keep growing, keep growing from there. And so focus on inbound, focus on actually providing value, posting content, getting people to come to you because you will make a lot more money that way. Even if you feel like an imposter, an imposter, everyone feels like an imposter when they're starting out, but uh, it's, it doesn't matter. Just again, I thought that I wasn't good enough because this other guy was really good, but then I came to the realiz realization that I was actually better than he was and I could actually provide value to people and actually people wanted to watch my videos. So anyways, all right, now for the last year and a half, I make about 50 to $60,000 a month, anywhere between I mean, now we're kind of hovering. 10 to twenty thousand dollars per week and as i showed you just proof right here and uh i have a team that helps me some people that take on sales calls i take on a lot of calls myself i'm a little a bit of a grind area right now where i take on like client calls monday and tuesday i have like calls booked all day monday and tuesday like till 8 p.m and then on wednesdays i take on some sales calls thursday friday i usually try to work on some videos i haven't been able to like last week was my birthday so i wasn't able to i'm trying to you know catch up on videos right now and so that's my grind right now. I'm basically $20,000 a week and working 60, 80 hours a week, doing as much as I can. I, my goal is to make a million dollars this year 
and grow my audience. Again, usually you'll hit the, whatever you say the goal is, you'll probably hit just that, right? Just the million or whatever it is, right? So just keep, just start aiming your goals a little higher so that hopefully you can hit those higher goals rather than just the, the one thing that you said or a smaller goal. And I'm just trying to grow my audience right now and help as many people as I can. So my last pieces of advice, time, work on the most important tasks. Like I said earlier, when I was in California, I didn't really know what to do all day. The best thing you can do is just move the needle forward. What is going to actually move the needle? It's just the one task of it. We'll just send out more messages. Just cold call more people. That's all you have to do. And the thing is, nobody wants to do that thing. Anyone that comes back to me, like people that join my program and they say, Carson, this, this, this just isn't working for me. I'm like, okay, what did you do? What messages did you send? Oh, I sent these messages. Okay, well, one, I told you not to send those messages to those people. I told you to go in this audience. But two, usually they're like, oh, I sent like 200 messages this month. You're supposed to send 200 messages per day. You sent 200 messages this month. It's just doing more and more and more and more higher quality and quantity. That's what you need, okay? Just do more. The one thing that's gonna move the needle forward, forward, right? Stop consuming content and just get started. Now, I would only consume content just to steal. So I think this is a good piece of content for you because you can kind of learn stuff and you can steal my advice. I watch content about like oh, people that did marketing in the past. I was just watching something from Gary Benzavinga, I think his name is. And he's a, a really good marketer, worked with David Ogilvy and all that stuff. And so I just watch marketers in the past and I just steal their ideas, just like the scamming thing. Or I go, anytime I just consume, I try to only consume to steal from other people. I don't just keep watching videos on YouTube. One, I don't watch like Stephen James or uh, what's his, the Sam Ovens or Tyler Lopez anymore just to like get head knowledge and just kind of waste my time with this mental stimulus of just thinking I'm actually, because I thought, what I thought back then was just what's beneficial is if I just read a book and I just play video games while I read the book or I clean the house while I read the book. You know, I'm not actually doing anything that's actually going to further my success or growth. I'm just reading a book and hoping that helps me, which obviously it can help you, but I would actually just start doing something, start creating, don't keep consuming. Cool. Also, massive change comes with massive change. You're not going, nothing's going to change for you unless you change, right? And so the whole thing where, okay, I gave $1,000 to my church and I was like, oh, God, I'm going to go all in. I'm going to give up on DoorDash. I'm going to stop doing that completely. And I'm going to just start doing this. And so that was a complete change where I had to completely change my daily routine. I had to completely change what I was, my habits for that week, right? And it wasn't like, it wasn't like I was taking cold showers or anything, not, nothing that crazy. All you have to do is just do something massively different than what you're doing right now. If you're not getting good results, you just have to do something massively different. And again, try to commit for a year. If you're trying to do something crazy, I committed for a year and that year changed my life. Cool. All right. Uh, don't take on crappy clients. I didn't mention anything like this, but I did take on some crappy clients just because you want the money and they're willing to pay you the money. And then they just, they'll text you every, uh, this guy was texting me like 3 a.m. And it's like, he's in Germany. It's like, okay, this is, it's like 6 a.m. for you. He's texting me throughout the night. So I'm like, I don't even know when you sleep, but you're texting me at 3 a.m. And just texting me throughout the night and always wanting something like now, 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 now. And then in the end, they will always still want their money back. So it's like, there will be a nightmare, a nightmare, a nightmare. And then in the end, they'll still kind of want their money back. And so you're just going to lose. So as soon as you realize they're a bad client, just get rid of them as quickly as you possibly can. It's not worth your time and money. All right. Study old strategies and steal them and just apply it to today. So I study a lot of direct response copy from the 1990s, 1980s, people that sent out letters. And when you're sending out letters, you have to kind of apply the same strategies. Like what if you sent from a girl name? Usually they're more responsive from a girl name. Or what if you, what if it looks like it was coming from a real, it didn't look like an ad on the front of the letter. It looked like a real person. So you want to kind of seem like a real person when we're sending out these messages, you know, things like that. You have to think about, and then steal, steal, steal. The only reason I'm here today is because I literally stole every single thing, every single bit. This video idea I'm doing right now, I saw someone else make a video, almost the exact same title, right? And I was like, he got a million views on a very new channel. Okay, cool. Let me steal that, right? That's all you have to do. Just steal from other people that are already doing the best. Every major YouTuber does it. Every major big artist does it in terms of like uh, music and everything. They all do it. All you have to do is just steal from other people. Not in a way where you're just blatantly copying them, but you just kind of apply it to your own way. I did the same thing when I did TikTok, right? I used to make TikTok videos. There would be a trend that would start going. I called it catching the trend where you would just do that trend too. You just do it your own little way and you will get millions of views just copying somebody else's trend, you know? So always steal. It's way easier to get a huge success from stealing from others. So I'm going to offer you, you can steal from me. I have three business models that I know are working for my clients. And usually they're making about $20,000, $30,000 within three months using these business models. So I will let you steal these models. I will help you. I will personally pick the niches for you. I will give you the outreach scripts that you can use. I will write your outreach messages for you. I will scrape the lead list for you. And we will give you the automation tools that you need. So it'll automate sending out 200 messages a day so you don't have to do it manually yourself. 
and you will get appointments or leads or clients within one week guaranteed. And I will work with you until you hit $30,000 a month. So as long as it takes, if that takes one week or I'll say three months, that's great. You hit $30,000 in three months, awesome. I'll work with you until then. If it takes you three years, I'll work with you until you hit $30,000 a month. So if it takes three years of me getting you lead lists, me helping you create scripts, whatever you need, you'll have access to me until you hit $30,000 a month. I'm only doing this for five people this week. I can show you my calendar right now, but I'm pretty packed out almost already. So if you want to book, as you can see, Monday and Tuesday is already booked up. Wednesday, I have some time. I might open up Thursday if you guys book on my calendar enough, where if Wednesday gets folded up, then I'll start booking up because Thursday and Friday, I usually work on videos. So if you're interested in that, but this is a direct call with me as well too. So sometimes you talk to my closers, but this is a direct call with me if you're interested in this thing. Only five people this week. If you're interested, let me know. Thank you for watching. I hope this is helpful for you guys out. I try to give you as much as I can in this video and I love you and I'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye.